Hi, everyone, and welcome along to another episode of UCAT Conference TV. I'm Colm Cronin from the Adventures in Advising podcast, and today I am delighted to be joined by a friend, a colleague, the fantastic, and now the proud holder of the inaugural Charlie Nutt Award from UCAT and LVSA, Gavin Farber. Gavin, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing good today, Colm. It's an honor to be here. Well, I'm delighted to uh, have the opportunity to talk to you. I've been fortunate to, to know you now for a few years. I know what great work you do, and I'm delighted that you're getting the recognition for it. But before we maybe delve into to the award, um, for for viewers out there who you know may be less familiar with you, um, can you talk to me, Gavin? I suppose a little bit about you know your your current work and your involvement with UCAT. Sure. Um, so I work as an academic advisor at Temple University. We're a large urban university in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in the United States. Uh, we have just over 40,000 undergrad and graduate students. I work particularly with our students in the first and second year in the Fox School of Business and Management. Um, so typically they are uh, traditional college age, so usually 18, 19, 20 year olds, um, some non-traditional in that mix, um, military, former military students are in that mix, adult learners over the age of 25. Um, but yeah, predominantly in my role, I am helping to help students find what academic discipline or department they want to declare. Um, do they want to study abroad in their time? What the whole, you know, Obviously, we're on the four-year system, not the three-year system that we see in the UK and throughout the EU and pretty much non-American world predominantly. Um, and that to me is so fascinating. Um, and also, you know, I teach seminar classes. So seminars in the States are very different from what we see sort of in seminars in Europe and the UK systems. Um, you, we might consider a seminar like a seven-week course about you know, introducing a new college student to university life, uh, how to study, how not to do plagiarism, how to, you know, get involved in activities on campus. And so I teach classes like that. Um, and we've discovered over the years that we've had to create ones for different populations. So um, this past semester, I started a transfer seminar, which would be equivalent to FE students coming into the university system and the UK, in the UK and Ireland system. So um, that's been thrilling. Um, and I also do a class for exploratory students who want to find what discipline they want to do. And we collaborate a lot with faculty as well in our role. So it's a little bit of everything we do, just like with any academic advisor, tutor, or study advisor. Um, and not every day is different. And that's what I love about a career in higher education is that every day is different and your calendar looks different. And if it was the same Monday through Friday, nine to five, I would not be in that career anymore. So there you go. Well, you are wonderful at uh, juggling all of the, the different aspects. And uh, I, I want to give a, a shout out to, to Philly. Uh, I, as somebody who spent uh, a month there when I was 17 working on a Habitat for Humanity project, it's always had a, a special place uh, in my heart. And uh, I hope to get back there in the not too distant future. So we've covered your day today. Tell me about how um, an advisor at Philly gets involved with UCAT. That's a great question. So um, I first learned about UCAT when I had gone to the International Nakata Conference in Dublin, where we met back in 2018. And I met David Gray, who I was just enthralled by and thought, mm, this, this man is very interesting. And, you know, started just learning about the world outside of North American advising and that there were these other affiliated groups that were part of Nakata, UCAT being one of them. And then um, the following year when we were in Belgium together uh, in Hassel, um, I got to meet Ann Bingham, who's also a member of UCAT. And, and we were talking about our roles and what we were doing. And I just sort of decided in 2020, it was time to join UCAT to really support the mission and support our global partnerships. And, and because I work in Nakata's advising communities, they had these special interest groups that are very similar to what an advising community is. 
Um, and Anne asked me to come on to um, work with them. Uh, it was a role she previously had. So between David and myself and Dave Lockie, um, you know, I've been able to work with some of those communities over the last, you know, academic year. Um, and it's been super fun uh, to be on um, the executive committee. Um, and I really feel like UCAT's a big family. So just like Nakata's a big family, why not jump in with another family and just make it a little larger? It's your extended family from across the pond. <laughs> Fantastic. But it is not just your work at Temple. It is not just your work with Nakata. It is not just your work with UCAT. Uh, Gavin has yet more strings to his bow, uh, which is uh, one, of the, one of the myriad reasons why you uh, won the, the Charlie Nutt Award. And for, for, you know, for viewers, I suppose, can you, um, you know, talk to me a little bit about uh, when you discovered that you were going to, to win the, the award and, you know, the, the work that, that led to, to winning the award? Absolutely. So I'm still floored I won the award. Um, I, I met Oscar from LVSA at my first annual Nakata back in 2017 in St. Louis, Missouri. And I just knew him as just the Dutch guy, like the friendly Dutch person, like the guy that you go to talk about research and things like that. And and I just came to realize, you know, that there was something extra there with the work with LVSA. And so, um, again, it was just this love of the world and love of exploring. And, you know, as I sort of climbed up in Nakata leadership, taking over the advisor training and development advising community, you know, in the summer of 19, you know, I got an email from a colleague, an American working in Australia named Suzanne Seely, who said, help, I need help with training and development and, and mentoring. I've got these advisors who are new to the field. They're not new to higher ed in Australia, but some of them are just, I need help. And, and, I, and I say it brilliantly that we're in the helping field. So you don't say no, you say yes, and you embrace it. And you make those challenges that you might have, you just work with it. And so I actually remember going to my supervisor and explaining to her like, hey, that Nakata role I have with being in charge, well, I'm now working with an Australian institution. So there'll be days when I need to stay late in the office or you know, take calls or, or do something. And they were quite supportive of that. And, and so for the last almost two years, along with other Nakata partners and friends, you know, uh, we've been working with this particular university, La Trobe in, in Melbourne, and that advising staff went from about two professional advisors to a staff of 21 now. And, and we did this exploratory mentoring program in November of 19, and then unfortunately the pandemic hit, so that cohort kind of got a little jagged, but we are kicking off a second cohort of mentors um, from a larger pool of countries. Um, before we were just focusing on mentees just from La Trobe and that didn't feel very inclusive. And so as we were talking to different partners like David and Oscar and, you know, me, I was just going through the Nakata membership and just looking up countries. And there was a, a, a manager named Tina from a school called Massey in New Zealand who I said, I want to email her and see if there's something we can do to help them. And she wrote back saying, I got a mentor, but can you take on two mentees? And I said, absolutely. Um, and then working with LVSA, there was a Dutch advisor who wrote to me and, and said, may I be a mentee? Absolutely. Um, you know, and just calling people that we knew in Japan and China and, you know, throughout the world, you know, and calling upon, Colm, you and your friends in Ireland. And we have four volunteers from Ireland. Now, the brilliant part was that we had more mentors than mentees this time, but that's okay. I made sure that, you know, as many of our colleagues that put in their applications first got in. Um, but, you know, that's the thing. When you do mentoring for a living on top of your other job, you might as well go from an institutional model, just what I do at Temple, and what I do maybe regionally within my little mid-Atlantic region of Nakata, we said, why don't we just do it globally and see what happens and say, you know what, this person from New Zealand should talk to this person in Ireland and they may work well. Or this Australian talking to an American might do some real help and vice versa. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk at UCAT this week about intercultural communication 
And that's so important. There's classes on it. You know, one of my girlfriends teaches that class now at a university we went to in our undergrad, and it's brilliant that it came full circle. She took the class as an undergrad, and now she teaches it. Go figure. And and, and so important because the dialogue has to continue. Um, and it's sort of what Charlie's legacy is in not just Nakata, but UCAT or LVSA. It's just, you know, I had to explain to my dad yesterday, he was on the couch next to me when I had won the award. And I had said to him that Charlie, for example, with Wendy Traxel, who's head of our research, they were in China for like two weeks, at least one year, just meeting advisors in China. They were in Beijing and, you know, figuring out what that advising landscape looked like. And the fact that they're fearless, as long as you get on the plane, your passport gets stamped, you get off the plane, you start meeting people. Um, and, and you have to be fearless, I think, in this industry, because there's a lot of, there's a lot of roadblocks and red tape we quote unquote go through in this industry. And, you know, as much as we have to do that, it, it's worth it at the end. Um, I think this work makes me a better practitioner too. You know, as much as I love my students and I love helping them as much as I can, we as practitioners, if we're gonna last and retain in the industry, I have to connect with people. I'm a connector, but I like being connected as well. And um, it makes me feel fulfilled. And yes, it's long work days where you might be up, you know, 19, 20 hours a day and you pass out and you only get four hours of sleep that night. But I know I I'm doing something that's bettering myself. Now, awards are great, you know, and it it's a piece of, you know, piece of paper or whatever it is. I still don't believe I win stuff, you know, because it's just, it's what I do. It's my passion. You know what I mean? Um, so it's very honorable when you, when you, when you hear Charlie not saying beautiful things about you, because I just want to say beautiful things about him. Well, I think your work is a test is, is the best test when you can do you're, you're carrying on that legacy and uh, it brings a couple of things to mind. One, I talked to Charlie last night and I think that uh, when Charlie moves into retirement, I don't know if you've seen Last Chance You and they always have like the advisors kind of in the background. I think we should just do Last Chance You academic advising, but it's Charlie not on tour around the world. Uh, so Charlie revisits China or Charlie goes to, to New Zealand, but that's my idea for sure. But I love what you're you're talking about and your summation of, of your work and the fact that it's growing so much. Um, and I am going to give a plug at this point to the fact that you came on and you spoke to Matt Markin and I on the Adventures in Advising podcast with Suzanne Seeley, uh, another brilliant advisor. Both of you absolutely fantastic. And for people who want to hear more about um, the, the work that Gavin and Suzanne did at putting that um, together at La Trobe, check out episode 20 of Adventures in Advising. It is a, a longer discussion and is really fantastic to get to hear both sides of, of how it kind of came together. Uh, really interesting. And I suppose then now you've talked about what you've Put, you know, you're already on to the second group of mentors and mentees, and it has grown further. Um, I'm wondering, you know, what else is in store for Gavin Faber in 2021? You know, an amazing project, you know, and again, you meet people. And, and um, I, I, along working with Charlie, I work with Terry Farr, who's currently on the board of directors of Nakata. And, you know, I, I had said to someone, um, I was working with my executive board of the training and development AC, and it was last May or something, or last June. We were just talking on our executive board, and we were like, wouldn't it be great to do like a series? Because at the time, we thought we were going back in August of 2020, back to our offices, because we didn't know what COVID was going to do. And they're like, wouldn't it be great if we did like sort of just a little like, you know, an hour, like returning to campus? And I mentioned it to Terry and she says, that's a great idea. I wanna mention it to the board and the council. So working with Charlie originally was going to be just one or two talks with just advising administrators. Well, that's exploded. We now have done six talks. We've focused on peer advisors. We've done training and development. We've done two-year college representatives. We've done, you know, um, 
just different populations that we wanted to be heard. You know, we're having one just on Canadian advisors in June. We're doing another one with administrators, uh, kind of part three of the administrative perspective in May. Um, working with the G GI, the the Global Initiatives Count, uh, Committee with um, Susan Corner out of the University of Victoria. She's really interested in the stuff I'm doing. And I said to her, we really need to do one for Australia and New Zealand. We need to do one with Japan and maybe China. We need to think about one specifically with maybe a Dutch and an English and Irish perspective and seeing what, you know, Eve and um, Melissa were talking about yesterday about their discussions. And I thought that would be a great panel of six for 90 minutes and let the North American population meet one, some great people from those countries and areas, but also know that what we talked about yesterday in that group session for over an hour is what everyone's been going through. And it's the same positions, it's different titles, similar students, different languages. But again, I think people in our industry, and I think maybe it's an American perspective because we're not, I mean, I was given an atlas at the age of three, go by my mom, but not every person's given an atlas and giving a perspective on globalizing yourself and seeing a world. I think sometimes we're just very set in sort of where we're from and our communities and we don't think like, oh, wow, someone across the world might be going through the same thing that I'm going through. Um, and, and those conversations will continue. I like doing small groups of six or eight, put them on Zoom for an hour and a half and just let them talk. Let people talk, put a and a in, and it goes really well. Um, and those are the things I like to organize. It's almost like I'm not a person that would design dinner parties for 20. I would be a I would be a dinner party person for no more than eight, maybe six. I like to go out to dinner with one person. You know what I mean? In this post in this COVID world, I'm not going out with you unless you have the vaccine as well and you've waited your two weeks. Like that's the thing. I I like that yeah. you you say uh, you know I, I I had dinner party for six. Yeah, but you'd have those dinner parties every night of the week because everything that Gavin Farmer touches just grows. You are you are King Midas. I, I feel fair, fair play. See, I asked that question. I didn't know what the answer was going to be, but I knew there'd be something. I knew Gavin ha had something he was he was working on, and it's uh, fantastic to hear. And like, look, you you really are you know, pushing the boundaries of the, the profession and you're connecting people and you're ensuring that we grow, we develop. And I think that is, you know, Charlie took the baton, you, you're you now taking the, the baton on as well. I mean, there and there's loads of great work. You've mentioned some of the people there and there are, there are others. There's so much great work going on across the, the sector. It's uh, it's fabulous to, to see. And, um, you know, you might be surprised that you're winning awards, Gavin. It is not a surprise to those of us who know you and uh, who want to continue to, to see you do great things. So, look, I want to just say thank you for taking the time to, to chat to me uh, at early, relatively early in the morning for, for you. Congratulations again on winning the award. It's fantastic. And I look forward to you know, continuing to meet with you virtually, but hopefully meeting you in person in the not too distant future. You know, I can't wait till I can go back to Dublin. I love your city, I love your country. I wanna explore the entire country and it's not just because of the shows I watch on the BBC America. Well, come back. Do please get a, yeah. get a group. I know I know that Rhonda was talking about coming back. Uh, Charlie is talking about coming back. I think Nakada on tour. Um, Ar Ireland twenty twenty two. I think seventeenth of March twenty twenty two. Hopefully we're post COVID. Nakada does St Patrick's Day in Ireland. What do you think? Oh, that would be brilliant. And we'll get UCAT and LVSA as well. You know what? Because they'll be in Scotland next year, so it's just a short little ride. Get on the Aer Lingus. You know what? Get Aer Lingus, get Aer Lingus to sponsor it, and they could have our logos on the jets. And you could just, it could be like the Victoria's Secret Angels, but it could be like little jackets we get with the logos. Like, we're not angels. We're just advisors. <laughs> Gavin Farber, this has been fantastic. Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome, Colm. Anytime I can talk to you is a pleasure and a treat.